This nation created more wealth in 200 years than all previous history of mankind. In 2008, we decided to vote for change. And one of the first things we did was look at the spending patterns. And, and the United States had carried a debt rate. If you go in to borrow a, money for a car or for a house, they want to say, what are your financials? That is, how much do you owe and how much do you make? And the national debt for America between the last 70 years, from World War II till now, was virtually a straight line. It fluctuated between 35 and 45 percent of the gross domestic product all the way across until the day that Barack Obama was sworn into president. And on January of 2009, it was at 40 percent of GDP virtually exactly the place where it had been forever, except he had a good idea, he, he thought. That is, why don't we just go spend a whole potload of money? And so he came up with this idea, and he called it a stimulus program. Stimulus. Now, that stimulus means that it's not going for agriculture or for education or for defense or, or for anything else. It's just, it's just going, this is Chicago walking around money. We're just going to get some money, and we're going, to, we're going to pass it out. And he passed a bill that was nearly a trillion dollars. We've never done that in history nearly a trillion. Now, money doesn't mean anything except in comparison. The, all the money that's sent to Washington, the entire tax revenue of the entire nation is two and a half trillion dollars. And he came in in the first 10 days wanted to pass another trillion in spending. Now, the national debt was already, deficit that year was going to be about 400. He added another trillion on top of that and spent 200 more and ran the deficit that year to 1.6 trillion dollars in one year. And then, and then he went around and said, I inherited it. <laughs> inherited it nothing. You're the one running the credit card. But what, is it, what did that do to the nation? Well, over the last four years, the income to the average family has diminished by 10 percent. But the net worth the value of all of us, when we take the value of our home, the value of our car, when we put all our balance sheets together, 40 percent of the wealth of the nation has been diminished in just these last four years. In fact, the wealth of the nation has now gone back to 1990. In other words, 22 years of progress has been wiped out because of the spending patterns of Washington. You say, well, why do they do this? Good question. Glad you asked that because I got the answer. The way that it works is you have to create wealth, and government cannot create wealth. Government only takes from people that have it. I used an example once before. Let me just quickly do it again. That is that if, if a person pulls up in a car and a, someone comes over and takes half of the money out of the, the person's purse while she's sitting there at the streetlight, has that person created any wealth? No, it hasn't created. Has he redistributed wealth? Yes, redistributed. But did he said he didn't create any wealth. It takes wealth to create a job. So a criminal coming along, taking money out of the purse, cannot, by definition, cannot create a job because they haven't created any wealth. All they've done is redistribute it. So instead of calling that person a criminal, let's call him a congressman. And he comes along and he takes, <laughs> he takes half of the money. And when he takes half of the money out, has he, has he redistributed wealth? Yes. Has he created any wealth? No. So therefore, can a politician create a job? Of course not. Of course not. You have to create something. How do you create it? You have to build it. You have to invest and make something that somebody else wants so that they take their money and they engage in purchasing the product and both are then better off when they do it. In order to do that in America, it takes about $250,000 per job. That's, that's the average. It works like this. Let us suppose you lived on a farm. On a farm, what you would do is you would take money at the end, take grain at the end of the year, and you would put it aside, and this grain will be called seed corn. That is, we're not going to eat it, and we're not going to sell it. We're going to save it for next year. And next year, what we're going to do is we're going to plant it so that we can then have more crops. Rather than calling that seed, let's call it money. And so a business if they have money to run the business and they sell the product or they take money and put it in their pocket as income, but they put some of it aside for the single purpose of creating a new job so that they can buy a new plant of equipment. Now, they didn't put it in their pocket and they're not doing, they're using it to, to form what we call, if they just called it money, it'd be easier, but it has a special name. It's called capital. And we take money and we take capital and we lay it aside for the purpose of creating more jobs. 
Now, you don't want anybody to get in there. You don't want the rats to get in there and eat it. You don't want anybody to get that because this is what creates the jobs. You certainly don't want politicians taxing it. And so in Asia, in all of the Asian tigers, Korea, Thailand, Singapore, uh, Taiwan, all of these countries, the tax on capital, the capital gains tax is zero. In the countries of Eastern and Central Europe, the countries that were controlled under communism, when they got independence, they formed an economic system and they said, we certainly don't want to tax the seed corn because that's how we create jobs. And so the, the tax on capital, the capital gains tax in Central and Eastern Europe is zero. In America, we have the highest capital gains tax in the world. We have the highest corporate tax in the world. And Barack Obama promises that by January 1st, he will double both. Now, when you do that, you don't create jobs such that one person in six in America is now living in poverty and you destroy wealth.